In this episode, we are going to look at a story of a humble cobbler named Ahmed and the interesting turn of events in his life. Was it luck, fate, or a mere coincidence? Or did this simple cobbler tap into something much more powerful with his humble attitude? Hi, I'm Sean and welcome to Mythos of the World podcast where I retell some incredible and insightful stories from around the world. A long long time ago in the city of Isfahan there lived a cobbler named Ahmed. He lived happily with his newly married wife in a very tiny house. Now in a worldly sense Ahmed was poor. He made just about enough to provide the basic necessities for himself and his wife. But in his heart Ahmed was very rich for he was very content with his life and he would often say yes i may be poor but if this is the will of the divine so be it it so happened that one day while during a visit to the hammam the local public bath ahmed's wife was forced to give up her spot to the wife of the royal chief astrologer and to add insult to injury she was verbally abused and bullied the wife was very hurt she ran home and cried to her husband Ahmed was much saddened by his wife's pain. But what can we do? said Ahmed. This is our fate. Now the wife did not want to hear this. Husband, she said in a firm voice, till you become the chief astrologer at the Sultan's palace, I will neither think of you nor call you as my husband. Ahmed didn't take this too seriously. He assumed his wife was talking out of pain. and it will come to pass in a few days a few days came to pass and he slowly began to realize his wife meant what she said for she neither thought of him or called him husband and abstained from all her wifely affections ahmed tried his best to reason with her how can i become an astrologer let alone royal chief astrologer he asked i don't even know what you have to study for it but but you have to study a lot he begged and pleaded but all fell on deaf ears till you become the chief astrologer at the sultan's palace i will neither think of you or call you as my husband finally ahmed realized he had no choice but to do as his wife said he didn't even have enough money to buy the equipment the astrologers used So very reluctantly he sold all his cobbler tools, equipment and stock. And with that money he bought an astrolabe, an ephemeris table, hourglass and dust table. For these were the equipment he had seen other astrologers use in the bazaar. Wife, this alone would not make me an astrologer. Please see reason. He pleaded one last time with his wife. Set up your store on the main high road to the Sultan's palace. just before the bridge was a reply the reluctant ahmed walked to the high road he was terrified of what was before him he hardly comes to this part of the town let alone set up a stall that too as an astrologer something he knows absolutely nothing about as he set up his stall and sat down he felt as if all eyes were piercing through him that they could all see that he was a fraud absolutely terrified He squatted down, holding his knees close to his chest. He muttered to himself, "If this is the will of the divine, so be it." Just then, a lady from a noble family happened to walk by. Seeing Ahmed's stall, she approached him. "Can you speak with the stars?" she asked. "Um, yeah, y- yes I can." "Good. Can you ask them where my gold ring is?" "Um, uh sure sure the um d- describe the ring for me the lady squatted down excitedly and began to describe her ring just as she sat ahmed saw a tear on her garment i see a tear said ahmed oh yes of course she exclaimed now of course ahmed was referring to her garment but it had registered completely differently on the lady's mind 
It so happened that earlier that day the lady had taken off her ring and placed it in the tear in the wall before taking a bath and had completely forgotten about it. So when Ahmed mentioned the tear, it reminded her of the place. She went home and found the ring exactly where she had placed it. She was so impressed by Ahmed, she rewarded him handsomely and sang his praises to all whom she met. Ahmed had just earned what he would usually earn in a month. He ran home to his wife, showed her the earnings and once again begged to quit while ahead. This was just a beginner's luck, he pleaded. But the wife said nothing. She saw the earnings as a sign for the good fortune that was yet to come. The reluctant Ahmed had no choice but to continue. A few days passed. A high-ranking general of the Sultan's army approached Ahmed. A diamond necklace has been stolen from me. Can you find it? he asked. Describe the necklace for me, said Ahmed. The general began to describe the necklace, but poor Ahmed was unable to find any clues. Now Ahmed was truly terrified. This was no ordinary man. He was a general in the Sultan's army. When he finds out that Ahmed is no real astrologer, he will be arrested and executed in public for fraud. How how many diamonds does it have? 24 came the reply. 1 hour per diamond. Come back in um, 24 hours, said Ahmed with a desperate hope of extending his life to at least another 24 hours just as the general was out of the air shop ahmed looked up at the sky thinking of his wife and the situation she has put him in he cried o oh woman o oh woman what evil came over you to do such a thing in 24 hours all will be revealed and a what a terrible punishment awaits then once again closing his eyes He muttered to himself, "If this is the will of the divine, so be it." It so happened that the wife of the general had sent her most trusted servant to overhear her husband's conversation. As Ahmed cried to the sky, the servant was still present and heard all that he had said. She ran to her master as fast as she could and said everything she had heard. "Are you sure that's what he said?" asked the general's wife yes ma'am word for word he looked up at the sky and cried why you had performed this evil act and how you will have to be punished for it in 24 hours said the servant then then he must know that i stole the necklace said the general's wife trembling with fear and at once she and her servant ran to ahmed please please have mercy on me she begged him Now our poor Ahmed was completely clueless to who these women were so he looked at them blankly but to the wife it felt as if Ahmed's eyes pierced through to her soul and he could see everything about her unable to cope please please show me mercy she pleaded i stole the necklace out of desperation as my husband does not support my spending habits but my servant told me you cried for me and had asked 24 hours just to put off my terrible punishment please how can i get out of this i will reward you handsomely ahmed heard every word and then looked at the servant he put it all together yes my lady i was terrified of the punishment that you would face said ahmed then turning to the servant you have an incredibly intelligent servant as she was able to read my mind so accurately the servant was overjoyed and she bowed to Ahmed in absolute reverence and gratitude for this great man was able to see her true worth Ahmed continued to speak there is a way out place the necklace under your husband's pillow i will see to the rest of it the wife and the servant left with much gratitude and did exactly as Ahmed told them to do 24 hours came to pass and the general came to Ahmed once again I have consulted with the stars but they have set me a condition said Ahmed they can either reveal the thief or the jewelry but they cannot reveal both which of these would you like remember you cannot have both after some thinking the general felt he would prefer to have the necklace after all it was a family loom and was very close to his heart 
congratulating him on his wise choice, Ahmed revealed its location. The general, overjoyed having found his necklace, rewarded Ahmed greatly. The wife of the general, who was extremely grateful to Ahmed for not having revealed her secret, also rewarded him handsomely. Now Ahmed has made double of what he would have made in a year. He ran home to his wife, showed her the earnings and pleaded to stop while ahead. We could run off to another place, buy all my cobbler equipment again and make a peaceful living. But silence was a reply. Knowing he had no choice, Ahmed continued as an astrologer. When people approached him, he would make grand gestures as he was conversing with some invisible beings. Then based on the clues he was given, he would reveal to them the answers they were seeking. Or if he was unable to get anything, he would simply say, the stars do not wish to speak on this matter. Things were looking good for Ahmed. He and his wife moved into a new neighborhood. They moved into a much larger residence than before and lived very comfortably. Of course, the wife still did not call him husband and this pained him deeply. But on all other areas of life, they were very happy. Till one day. 40 cases of gold had been stolen from the royal treasury. The Sultan was furious. It was an insult to his reign. He had sent all his soldiers in all directions to catch the thieves, but no results. He consulted with the well-known and respected fortune tellers, but no results. Even his chief astrologer had failed to know the whereabouts of the stolen gold. In complete anger, the Sultan stripped him of his title and all his wealth and exiled him into the desert where he would die of hunger and thirst. At the royal palace, surrounded by his advisers, generals and their families. Is there no way to retrieve my gold? asked the Sultan. One of the generals, whom Ahmed had helped earlier by retrieving the necklace, stepped forward. There is this one brilliant astrologer. The all-knowing Ahmed, they call him, he said. Once Ahmed's name was mentioned, many began to sing his praise, for many of them had consulted with him before and were deeply grateful to him. Yes, yes, I have seen him speak to the stars, said one. Why, he could see in his vision where my golden ring was, said the wife of a noble man. The Sultan's court was filled with praises for the all-knowing Ahmed. Bring him to me at once. Ahmed was summoned to the court. There he stood in front of the Sultan in absolute terror, trying his very best to hide it. He had heard the news of what had happened to the chief astrologer. After all, he was a real astrologer. If that is his fate, what would become of me, he thought. But he kept his calm. How many cases of gold? he asked. Forty, came the reply from the Sultan himself. Very well, um, assigning one day per case, give me 40 days to find them all. Sure, in 40 days you will be summoned to the court once again. As Ahmed made his way out of the court, all those who sang his praises came to him excitedly and revealed how they had spoken so highly of Ahmed to the Sultan and how they each had recommended that Ahmed be approached for this job. Oh, really? Wonderful, wonderful, thank you. Ahmed saw a court filled with widely beaming undertakers, each having played their part in absolute perfection in having sealed his fate. With one polite bow to all of them, Ahmed left the court. The first thing he did was to walk as fast as he could to his old neighborhood for there lived his old friend who was an honest merchant. Give me forty beans, said Ahmed. Not one more or one less. Once he got the beans, he went to a quiet place and counted the beans. You see, for our poor Ahmed had never counted above thirty in his life. So for the first time in his life, Ahmed had learned the numerical value of forty. He was pleased with himself for a brief moment, as he had learned something new. But as soon as it dawned on him that this is how long he had left to live, he became depressed once again. 
Ahmed realized there was no point talking to his wife, as his pleas would fall on deaf ears. He could not flee the kingdom, as by now the word has spread to all the guards about how the all-knowing Ahmed was in charge of finding the gold. They would instantly recognize him at the borders. He finally accepted. This was it. His final 40 days alive. If this is the will of the divine, so be it, he muttered to himself. Then he placed his beans in his pocket. Then he stood up and went wherever his feet took him. And he stopped wherever his feet stopped him and enjoyed the view with a gentle smile. At dusk, he went home to his wife. From his pocket, he took out one bean. Giving it to his wife, he said, 40 cases of gold, 40 thieves, 40 days, and here is one of them. The rest will stay in place till time comes to give them up. Ahmed was referring to his time on earth, of course. But it so happened, ever since the news spread that the Sultan was about to consult the all-knowing Ahmed regarding the gold, the chief of the thieves had sent one of the thieves to spy on Ahmed. And as Ahmed gave the bean to his wife and uttered those words, it sent chills down the thieves' spine. He ran as fast as he could to the chief. We're in trouble. He knows everything, cried the thief, and said word for word what Ahmed had said. It could be luck, said the chief. Knowing the size and the weight of the gold cases, it's easy to assume that it would require 40 people to steal it. No, chief, replied the other. I have been watching him all day, like you say. When he left the court, he went and bought some beans. Then going to a quiet place, he uttered something in secret to each of them, turning them into magical beans. Then he smiled, closed his eyes as if the beans were telling him something. Then putting them in his pocket, he walked around the town and stopped at some of the places where we have hidden the cases of gold and smiled as if he knew the cases were nearby. Then at dusk, he gave one of the magical beans to his wife to protect her and he said, here is one of them referring to me. He even knew I was spying on him. The chief was startled by all of this, but to make it absolutely sure, he assigned another thief to spy over Ahmed the next day. The dutiful thief went to Ahmed's house long before Ahmed woke. He hid himself really well behind a tree and began to watch over Ahmed. Ahmed woke just before dawn and straight away began to count his beans to remind himself how many days he had left to live. This saddened him, of course, so closing his eyes, he went into deep thought for a few minutes, then saying to himself, If this is the will of the divine, so be it. He stood up and went wherever his feet took him. He stopped wherever his feet stopped, enjoyed the view with a smile, and at the end of the day, he came back home to his wife. And once again, giving her another bean, he said, 40 cases of gold, 40 thieves, 40 days, and here is another of them. The rest shall stay in place till time comes to give them up. Now you can imagine how the spy would have interpreted this. In absolute horror, he ran to the chief as fast as he could and told him everything. How Alchemist spoke to the beans, how they spoke to him, how he followed their direction and stopped at some of the places where the cases of the gold were hidden, how he smiled knowing the gold cases were there, and at the end of the day, how Ahmed was even aware of being watched by the spy while giving the magical bean to his wife, and finally, that Ahmed intended to reveal them all to the Sultan at the end of the 40 days. Fear and panic spread amongst the thieves. After some discussion, they came to a conclusion that they had no choice but to speak to Ahmed. So, a delegation was sent to Ahmed, led by the chief himself. Please forgive us, said the chief. We will tell you where all the gold is. Please spare our lives. Don't reveal us to the Sultan, he pleaded. Shush, do not insult me with your words, said Ahmed. 
If I ask the stars, they will bring the gold before me themselves. Sorry, sorry, forgive us. I didn't mean to. The chief panicked with fear of having insulted the all-knowing Ahmed. Ahmed raised his hand to command silence. After a few moments of deep thought, he spoke. But I don't wish to see you boys executed either. So how about this? To redeem yourselves from this sin, you take all the cases of gold and bury it in that small forest south of the high road and remain hidden in a place till I tell you. I will plead to the Sultan to overlook your misdeed. The thieves were much delighted by this gracious offer. They agreed wholeheartedly, just before they were about to leave. But remember, if you do not do as I say or try to flee the town, I will call upon the stars to have you all executed, Ahmed warned. The thieves, having witnessed his supernatural powers with their own eyes, did not dare to cross Ahmed. They did exactly as he had told them to. For the remaining 38 days, Ahmed continued to give the beans to his wife, but no longer worried about his fate. He went on his walks, taking a good look at the town and learned as much as he can about the state of the kingdom. At the end of the 40 days, he was summoned to the court. My lord, I have spoken to the stars. They tell me that either they can reveal the place of the gold or the thieves, but we cannot have both. Which of these would you prefer? The Sultan thought for a few moments. The royal treasury was very low at the moment and the gold was much needed, which Ahmed knew, of course. Fine, we rather have the cases of the gold, replied the Sultan. Ahmed revealed the place of the gold cases. The delighted Sultan rewarded him extremely well and appointed him as the chief royal astrologer. Finally, the dream of the wife had come true. Now Ahmed and his wife lived in the royal palace itself, having their own grand residence, servants and guards. This humble cobbler had risen to a great level of wealth, fame and influence, one he himself would not have dreamt in his wildest dreams. The wife was exalted. She was so proud of her husband and made sure to let him know in every way. But for our Ahmed, however, everything seemed frightening. The palace's grand walls looked like the walls of a prison. His own guards appeared as executions. Every day he lived in fear of being exposed and living within the well-guarded palace, he can't even run for his life. The very guards who protect him will drag him to death. He passed each day with fear, till finally that long-anticipated day of terror came. During a walk with the all-knowing Ahmed in the palace garden, the Sultan all of a sudden became curious to test him. So when Ahmed wasn't looking, he quickly caught a grasshopper in his hand, hiding it from Ahmed's view. Sir, what do I hold in my hand? Ahmed's heart sank. There it was, what he had long anticipated. And he could not deal with it anymore. The fear, the anxiety, the pain that he has gone through all this time. And once again, muttering to himself, if this is the will of the divine, so be it. Looking at the Sultan with pain in his eyes, he uttered a proverb that perfectly reflected his own situation as one final phrase before death. My lord, a grasshopper does not know where his third leap will land him. The Sultan did not fail to see the pain in Ahmed's eyes and thought to himself, not only does he know what I hold, but he even feels the pain of the grasshopper. What a great soul, what a great soul. He immediately released the grasshopper and bowed to Ahmed with great reference, vowing to himself to never test him ever again. And this is the story of how a cobbler became the royal chief astrologer. Thank you for listening. If you have been enjoying my retellings of these stories, please subscribe to the podcast. I have many more stories lined up. Also, in the podcast notes section, you can find links related to the stories. For example, in episode 1, you will find links to videos about the misconceptions of Norse mythology, 
and an article about the return and growth of the religions of the Vikings. On episode 2, The Tale of Arachne, you can find links to different versions of the stories and a small documentary on the weaving. For this episode, I have included a link to an article published by the Met Museum in New York titled Astronomy and Astrology in the Medieval Islamic World. These links can give you more insight about the culture the stories come from. Once again, thank you for listening and I will see you again with another story.